Hey there. Hey, I'm Oliver. Um, I'm the lead program of Broken Age. Uh, some of you may know um, the kind of that kicked off the whole Kickstarter craziness uh, in games. Um, I do want to talk about like GPU is not GPU, and that's going to be a very technical talk. And it's mostly for people here that may think about like writing games, both for desktop platforms as well as mobile GPUs. Um, this is a small part of my presentation I gave at GDC Europe for Broken Age. Uh, so if you've seen the, uh, the slides, then I do apologize. Um, um, okay, so Broken Age is, you know, Tim Schafer adventure game, and one of the things that <coughs> we wanted to go pretty early on is make sure that the game is accessible to pretty much everyone. We want to, you know, we want it accessible on plus, uh, desktop platforms as well as mobile platforms. Um, and this is a picture of my desk at work, uh, maybe like four weeks ago. <laughs> and the game is kind of running, as you can see, like on all the kind of different devices. And actually, here's the kind of platform overlay. So you see like, you know, the kind of, you know, Windows, Mac, and Linux, although it's not on the picture, it's to the left where the build server, Linux build server is. Um, so it's running on desktop machines, but it's also running on iOS like phones and tablets and all the Android like um, different devices. And although it's not tagged, like all the different Android like specialized GPU types are there, like as NVIDIA, Qualcomm, um, and PowerVR and stuff like that. Um, so one thing I kind of learned is that you know desktop GPUs are very very different from mobile GPUs. Although they may appear like from an API standpoint to be very similar, they're not. And you really need to know that they're not um, not the same. So um, desktop GPUs, we all know, you know, National Election Two, you know, works great on PC, and you know, desktop GPUs are really m designed for maximizing throughput, so pushing through vertices and like making as many pixels uh, as possible per second. And very often connected to that is you have lots of memory available, like you know, 512 megabytes, a gigabyte of VRAM is pretty common. Uh, now that requires you to kind of plug your computer into the wall and like actually, actually, you know, take a lot of juice to run those GPUs. Uh, but because of that, you don't have any limitations really to kind of amount of draw calls and like overdraw and stuff like that. Like if you stay within reasonable limits, it's going to be all right. Um, so a lot of people might notice, but the way you know a frame is generated, you're basically sending draw calls, and this is a draw call. So you're sending a draw call down to the graphics card, and while you keep sending draw calls to the graphics card, it will actually already start executing those draw calls and start rendering stuff into your back buffer um, to basically like have a complete asynchronous execution of your rendering, and again maximizing throughput. So you want to make sure that this actually works. And that's great, and we've been working with those kind of GPUs for a long time now. Uh, now what kind of, kind of joined the mix fairly reasonable are mobile GPUs. And they're actually very different, because the main design goal here is to minimize power consumption. Um, and you know, one of the slides for desktop GPUs said that they take around like 100 watts and up. Mobile GPUs have to live with like 100 milliwatts. Um, and that's a huge, huge difference. And, Basically, when uh, mobile GPU architects work on those ships, the, the one of the main uh, realizations is that memory actually takes up a lot of power. So you want to really uh, cut down on your power consumption, which means removing VRAM. And in fact, there's so little VRAM that your like frame buffer doesn't fit into VRAM. In fact, very often you only have like uh, memory for like a 16 by 16 uh, like VRAM piece. And that has implications that you need to draw differently, which is tiled rendering. Uh, and that you know, leads to other kind of consequences that you have to think about. Um, so let's kind of look at how a frame is generated again. So you're sending draw calls just like before, like as an API, it's all the same and it looks kind of like, oh, it's going to work just the same way, but it doesn't because as you already see, nothing appears quite yet on the back buffer. Uh, and the reason for that is like most mobile GPUs use a tiled rendering architecture, which means that you're going to basically draw the image in like little squares, um, and usually, as I said before, are 16 by 16 pixels, so this is exaggerated. Um, but in, able to be, uh, in order to be able to do that, you need to actually know what goes in those tiles. That's why you basically can't um, send um, uh, all your data immediately to the graphics card. You basically will start executing your vertex shader on the CPU, or like you will start executing your vertex shader to be able to know what triangle, which triangle is going to go into that tile. So you can only send the data that's necessary for this tile to the graphics card. And that's really essential because there's so little memory, you have to do this. Um, and then you can basically go around and like, as you can see, only the data that's actually necessary for this tile is going to be sent down to the graphics card. Now that has actually huge implications. Um, for example, overdraw, which is kind of the, mo the main thing. If you ever think about making a mobile GPU game, don't like overdraw is going to be your killer. So try to avoid it as much as you can. 
Um, and the reason for that is if you think about the green rectangle and you think about maybe there's a little texture that only has like information up here, you know, like your VFX artists will do those kind of things all the time. The GPU can't know that there's no information, so it will still let down here. So it will still send those like two triangles actually to this tile, even though they're not going to generate any kind of sensible and valuable data for you. And that's overdraw, and that costs you uh, a lot of like time and memory, and you really want to kind of avoid those kind of things. Um, the other nice things as well, the mobile GPU, since you're kind of pre-executing stuff, you can actually start prefetching texture data, and that's actually what mobile GPUs do. Uh, when you send texture data down, or like tri uh, geometry data down, it will know, you know, all your vertices have certain UV coordinates, so it will start pulling data from those textures already in memory. So the first time your fragment shader hits, uh, like a texture sample um, command, the data will most likely be already there. So that has certain uh, consequences. Minimize overdraw, number one. Um, keep a number of draw calls down, because since you're basically going to send the data down to different tiles and needs to be kind of copied and differently processed, you want to keep the number of draw calls really, really low. Um, avoid render targets, mostly because of memory, like bandwidth reasons. Uh, avoid dependent texture lookups, and that's kind of related to the texture prefetching, because if you start modifying your texture columns in your fragment shader, you're going to destroy your cache, and you're going to lose all those benefits. Don't do it. And optimize shaders. Don't write any Uber shaders. Like have super, super optimized shaders. And there are a bunch of libraries that you can talk to me about later that you can use in the open source and freeware. Uh, you can just run your GLSL over those, and it's going to create a much better version. And I'm pretty much over. So um, thank you very much for your time. You can still become a backer if you want to. There are a lot of like really technical things on our forums. And yeah, that's it. Thank you very much.